So this is the Jordan 13 that Michael Jordan was wearing during the 1998 NBA season. And these are the Jordan 1s that Jordan put on his foot for what he thought was going to be his last game at Madison Square Garden. Now, if you watched my previous video, you know, I talked about, you know, why that the Jordan 1 soaked Michael Jordan's foot in blood. You know, number one, because, you know, the upper is just a little less malleable than the Jordan 13s. The last of his shoes had changed because his foot shape changes, right? As we get older, our feet widen and flatten. So even if he was wearing his custom Jordan 1s from the 80s, that foot shape is gonna be completely different than his foot shape would be in 1998. But what I think would have been a really cool idea would have been for Nike to take the uppers of the Jordan 1s and put them on the mid and outsole of the Jordan 13, giving them all the grip and playability that the Jordan 13's mid and outsole have, but kind of the cool custom look of the Jordan 1s. So I think today in this video, we're gonna to try to marry the uppers of a Jordan 1, not these ones, because I still like to have them on my wall for my videos, but the ones I've actually already soul swapped and made a Jordan 1 homemade comfort out of. I have a full length Zoom strobel in these ones and the Jordan 13. So let's see if we can do it. And yes, I know this particular Jordan 1 is a mid top, but then again, so is the Jordan 13. And if you match the level of the ankle collar from the 1 to the 13, that would also have helped stop that foot pain and blistering he was getting versus going from the 13's ankle collar suddenly to a higher ankle collar in the Jordan 1 highs, kind of rubbing in a spot that his skin just wasn't used to. Now, anyone that's ever sole swapped a Jordan 1 knows the hardest part is restitching them, especially in the forefoot because you're doing it all by feel. You gotta get it in to each of these little holes in there and you really can't see anything. You're trying to thread that loop uh, just all by feel. And now, of course, like a glutton for punishment, just taking it right back out of the shoe that I just did these in a few months ago. To separate the uppers from the midsoles, I'm gonna use boiling water. A lot of times you can use acetone, but on this one, because of that suede around the midsole, I don't wanna get that stain with acetone because it is very hard to get out, so boiling water it is. But now that I got both mid and outsoles off a little faster than I thought I would, I do want to look at the chassis of the Jordan 13 from above, kind of what the bottom of your foot sees when it actually plants into the shoe. And the mid and outsole design of the Jordan 13 is one of my very favorites, even against today's basketball shoes. And that's because if you look at it from the inside, which your foot is sitting on, it is a little bit more of an anatomic shape, not just to the toe box like some barefoot shoes would be, but more in the midfoot, which I think is a little bit more important, especially kind of in that arch midfoot area. But then then when you flip it over and go to the outsole of it, that's where you kind of get the panther influence, right? Kind of the, the pods of tread and then the shape of it. So you're getting the stability of more of a wide footed, like zoonotic influence on the shoe. But then on the inside of the shoe, it's a little bit more cradling to your foot, but the overall shape of the mid and outsole is still nice and streamlined as well as stable for a basketball shoe that can number one, work really well when you're trying to turn the jets on, but also a shoe that that when you're trying to grab traction or side to side stability really has you know got you there too it really is the perfect marriage of comfort function as as well as almost like elevating your footwork by using multiple different influences in the same type of chassis the shape of the jordan 13s also makes this a pretty awkward swap because there's so many undulations in the midsole and there's so many changes in height where the uppers meet the midsole versus on the ones which are just pretty oblong and regular so there's going to be a lot of nooks and and crannies that the ones just really don't fit into very well. And obviously, you know, I'm doing this sole swap in my basement, not a Nike or Jordan brand factory, where they have access to machinery to press fit these together. I mean, I know you can use a last, but that's not going to be a press fit machine, right? You still need a machine to press fit the materials around it. And honestly, the fit between the ones and the 13s isn't bad. In the rear foot, it is where the hardest part really is, is getting the a little bit more skinny of an ankle and heel counter of the Jordan 1 to fit into a little bit more of a wide set heel in the Jordan 13. So that's kind of what took the most time kind of press fitting that. But as I'm moving from the rear foot to the forefoot, that's where all the finagling has to go because it's on a straight cup sole like in the Jordan 1s. So when the midsole of the 13s goes really inferior, it goes really down low in certain areas, 
that's where you're starting to see kind of the, the glue line basically of the Jordan 1. Now you can kind of press fit that in with your fingers and kind of get into some of those crevices, but it, it is certain point, you know, it's a square peg into a round hole. So what I just am gonna do is just get a little bit of my uh, leather paint out there and just kind of go over those little imperfections, make it look a little better for Instagram, I guess. Um, but I, th I think the, the biggest problem is in the forefoot is just where that forefoot rubber that comes up, that drag guard over the toe guard, comes that's kind of where I think the biggest kind of mismatch between these shoes lasts are and I think if you're Jordan brand you probably just make the uppers just have a little bit more leather material down in there to kind of press fit it into that little corner but other than that um, these honestly weren't too bad to get together on the medial side there's a couple more undulations there in the distal forefoot and that's also kind of where the seam there of the uh, lace line here the Jordan 1 goes that's also an area that really just needs a press fit on there not just someone doing it with their fingers. And I think this would have been a really interesting and unique type shoe to kind of pay homage to, you know, Jordan's history at Madison Square Garden, his history with the Bulls, but also to allow him to have the super elite mid and outsole that the 13s had. So um, yeah, another uh, interesting sole swap, I should say, but I'd also love to hear kind of your thoughts if there's other Nikes you would like to see me swap or even other brands you'd like to see swap. I do like to do these videos because it is pretty DIY. I'm not really going to sell these or anything. Um, it's just pretty much for my edification just to see what shapes match up with you know with other shoes and if you do want to see the inspiration for this video uh, the story of really kind of the Jordan 13 and the Jordan 1 and Michael Jordan in 1998 I will leave that linked up above and make sure you subscribe down below respect your and foam I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse. I also have the sneaking suspicion that a lot of you stuck around this video to the end to see what the reverse or the cursed swap would look like so let me just kind of Give you a little sense of what that looks like here. There you go. There's the Jordan. I don't know if that one's the Jordan 98, I'm calling it. I guess this one's gonna be the Jordan 89. See you in the next one.